thanks for joining us today. My name is Brooke. Behind me is Chris. She'll be with Lando, our gray fox, and manning the camera is Kate. Hi. I'm going to be telling you about the fox today, so you'll see him doing some of his things, but I'm going to step aside and be off camera and just kind of be the voice telling you a little bit about what's going on. That way we can focus on watching the fox. If you guys have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Just leave them in the comments below and we can answer them as we go through. So without further ado, let's see Lando. So this is Lando. He is our gray fox. Gray foxes are found all throughout the United States and even down through Central America and a little bit down into South America. They're a really unique fox species in that they're the only fox that really spends a lot of time up in the trees. So we call him lovingly here at the zoo, we call him our little tree fox because he's really agile and he can climb straight up and down those trees to get away from predators and even chase prey up into the trees. So as he's going through, you guys will see him kind of jumping around, doing different things and using those really natural abilities. Lando is eight years old. He actually came to us in a rescue situation. Someone came across him out in the wild and they assumed that he was abandoned. He was just a baby and he was alone in the wild and they assumed that he was abandoned. So they took him home and for a little bit too long, they kept him in their house thinking that he might make a good pet. But it turns out foxes do not make very good pets. It was not a great situation and so they ended up donating him to a wildlife refuge and then we gave him a forever home here at the zoo. But the wildlife refuge, when they got in, he was a little bit too socialized, they so they weren't able to release him back out into the wild. So he's living here at the Sacramento Zoo and he does a lot of training sessions like this every day. And he gets a lot of attention from his keepers because he does very much like to be around humans. Look at that camouflage. <laughs> Excellent camouflage behind that tree. Almost as fierce. Now the thing about baby foxes, kits, is that they are often left by their moms. They're kind of what we call cached or stashed by their moms while their moms go off to hunt. So it's possible that Lando's mom was out hunting and trying to find food for him while he was stashed under some branches relying on his camouflage to survive. So we don't really know for sure, but he's a great example of why you want to leave wildlife alone because you never necessarily know the situation. He may have been waiting for his mom to come back when those hikers had stumbled across him. Now Lando is trained, as you see he's uh, participating, well he's not actually participating in a training session, but we are <laughs> asking him if he wants to participate. He has a few different behaviors that he can do, he's asked to go certain places, he's asked to jump up on things, he will give high fives. We do that behavior because we actually give him regular nail trims and so we want to be able to access his feet. So the high five is kind of like an offering his foot to us, that way we can trim his nails. You have a question, are you ready? Yes, I am. Awesome, Jade age four wants to know, what does he eat? Oh, Lando is an omnivore, which means he eats meat and plants. They're what we call generalists, so foxes will eat all kinds of different food. Here at the zoo, we feed him fruit as his treats. Mice and meat are also in that treat cup of Chris's. And then he gets some vegetables and a dry biscuit called carnivore chow and it's just extra nutrients for him that kind of helps round out his complete diet. Out in the wild he would eat really anything he can find. He would eat all kinds of meat. He's a great hunter. So small animals like snakes, birds, lizards, frogs, but he'll also eat a lot of plants. So if he comes across plants that he likes as well, he can eat those. They're actually doing very well out in the wild because of their ability to be very generalized. So they can survive in a lot of different habitats because they can eat a wide variety of different foods. That's not to say that they don't have struggles. Foxes face a lot of the same struggles that other animals do, like habitat loss or not being able to find appropriate shelter in their habitat where they are, but they can often adapt to a new situation if they need to. <laughs> Now, go ahead. Oh, I was like, we have one question just, I know you said it earlier, but just to reiterate, how old is Lando? Lando is eight years old. And they can live to be 15, maybe even older in a zoo setting. So he's about middle-aged at this moment. He still acts like a young fox though, very energetic, never really slows down. You'll notice his ears are always moving. By nature, foxes are really kind of nervous, always on alert animals. So they're always making sure that there aren't any predators around for them. 
They're a really small animal, so even though he's a great hunter, he also has a lot of potential threats out in the wild. <laughs> so he has those ears that move around, that way he can uh, make sure that he's always staying safe. Are there any other questions about Lando the fox? Not yet. All right, so Lando Calrissian Fox is his official full name. Um, I named him, and that's because I'm a super nerd, and I got to name an animal, so I named him a super nerdy name. So he has a Star Wars and Harry Potter name combination. So it's Lando Cal Calrissian is his middle name, and his last name is Fox, spelled F-A-W-K-E-S, for Fox the Phoenix from Harry Potter. So yes, when you give a super nerd the ability to name an animal, you're going to get something really insane. <laughs> but everyone just calls him Lando because who wants to say Lando Calrissian Fox the Fox every time? It's a bit much. <laughs> now when Lando's out here, he's on that nice long leash. He does have a shorter one, but it gives Chris a little bit more flexibility so they can do a lot of different behaviors out here on the stage. In his house, Lando likes to play with a lot of stuffed animals, but he does have a favorite ball that he enjoys. It's this black kind of rubber ball with a lot of holes and it's really squishy. And he'll pick it up in his teeth and he'll kind of fling it up in the air and then it will bounce away from him and he'll go chase it. And then we'll go in and we'll throw it for him so he chases it around. Now we talked earlier about foxes not being great pets. The fox is actually kind of a, a trend in the illegal pet trade right now. Um, it's yeah, as you can see, he's very cute, very sociable, and he looks a lot like a dog, and he seems like he, he acts a lot like a dog, but they have not been domesticated like dogs have, and so their behavior is really not conducive to a pet situation. So even though you're there thinking, oh my gosh, he's so adorable, I want one, don't get one. They do not work out very well in, in people's homes, and Lando is the prime example of that. He actually was in someone's home for a while, and it's just... He's too wild, he's not domesticated, they never really settle down and, and act like you would want a, a pet dog to act. Does he have not any cuddly. siblings? Not cuddly at all. No. Lando, we don't know actually if Lando has any siblings. He does not have any siblings here at the zoo. He was found as a single uh, fox out in the wild and so he came to us just as a, a solo guy. Now out in the wild, foxes will sometimes have you know small, smaller family groups operating smaller family circles, but for the most part, males are going to be more solitary and they're going to live their lives alone. So he is in a pretty standard situation that he would be out in the wild, but he also gets a lot of attention from us. Being raised at an early age with people, he has a larger desire to be around humans than a fox that was raised in the wild would. And so we make sure to go in and give him a lot of attention and play. Um, and he gets out for training sessions like this every day. Someone asked, does he love his zookeeper? Uh, yeah, yeah, he is really affectionate to a lot of us. He definitely is, uh, he has his moods. He can be pretty moody as well, and he is not a morning fox. <laughs> so he does not enjoy his keepers as much in the morning, mostly because that's when we have to go in and clean and we're making a lot of noise and we're not giving him attention. But by the time the afternoon comes around, he's very interested in our attention. He wants to play with us. He wants to be around us. Um, so love is a hard, you know, it's a hard one to categorize. But he, he tolerates us. He de definitely tolerates us, and he seems to enjoy our company when he feels like it. He's a, he's actually a kind of like a combination of a cat and a dog, I guess. Very dog-like in some ways, but wants attention when he wants it, and then can't, you know. There we go. <laughs> wants attention when he wants it, and lets us know when he doesn't want it. Now, I'm not able to get any close-ups of Lando right now because the foxes are naturally that kind of skittish, want to make sure anything isn't coming towards them. They're a really small predator, and so there are lots of things that could potentially eat them. So I'm staying a nice distance back so that way Lando is most comfortable. Now, we do have a question, Brooke. Uh, do red foxes live in our area? Oh, red foxes do not live in this area. So if you see a fox out in the wild, it's going to be this gray fox. Um, so red foxes are a lot taller. They're a little bit more lanky and obviously they are kind of a rusty red color all over their body. Lando is a pretty typical size for a gray fox. He weighs, hmm, do you remember his last weight? Five something kilos. So, so he weighs about 10 to 11 pounds and that's pretty standard. You notice he has a lot of adaptations on his body that help him survive in a wide variety of different habitats. So he has those nice ears that move constantly. He's got really long whiskers on his nose so he can help 
uh, kind of feel around if he's coming out at night. And then he's got that nice long tail for balance. So being a, you know, a fox that spends a lot of time up in the trees, he's going to be jumping around a lot. So having that tail for balance is really helpful. Now foxes can really change their kind of time of day depending on the season and depending on the habitat where they live. So if they're living in an area that's really hot during the day, they're probably going to be a little bit more crepuscular, which means coming out at dawn and dusk, or even a little bit more nocturnal, where they spend most of their wake hours at night hunting. But during the colder months or during, during an area where they can be kind of active all day, they might be a little bit more diurnal, coming out during the day like we are. We have a question, does he sleep in a den? He does. He has a, a few options in his house for sleeping. He does have kind of a, a wooden den box that we built him and he sleeps in there. But in these hotter <laughs> months, he tends to sleep a little bit more outside. And so he has this uh, kind of woven hammock platform that we've made for him. And he j tends to sleep there when it's a little bit warmer. And then in the colder nights, he'll sleep in his den box where it can stay a little bit more toasty. So he has a uh, kind of a flat hammock or a kind of fire hose woven thing that he sleeps on mostly. And then he has the den box he can go into and then he has kind of a hanging hammock, a little bit more of like a, a swing hammock situation that he can- It moves more. It moves more that he can rest in <laughs> during the day if he feels like it. So he has a lot of options for sure. The nice thing about these summer months too is we can give him kind of special enrichment with food even. Yeah, that's true. He has a lot of different enrichment. Foxes are really smart, and so we're really always trying to look for the next thing to kind of outsmart him or keep him <laughs> interested, because he figures things out really fast. So being smart, when you have an animal like that, you know, want to give them a lot of stimulation, a lot of things that kind of keep them active during the day, and enrichment is a really good way to do that. With Lando, we, ha we actually use a lot of uh, dog enrichment that you could buy for your dog at home and there are a lot of puzzle feeders where he has to either move it around and the treats fall out or he has to figure out how to open it to get to the treats. Um, so we buy a lot of actually kind of dog toys and, and home, pet, home pet toys like that that can kind of keep him interested and engaged and that way he can kind of you know mess with something throughout the evening when we're not there and, and try to learn how to figure it out. Obviously out in the wild he just wouldn't walk up to a bowl of food. So it allows him to kind of work for his food and really use that brain to figure things out. You can see he really, really likes uh, those scratches. It's what we call tactile. So Chris can touch him and he actually really likes to be scratched kind of on his side like that. Especially now, uh, animals with a double coat like a fox here, you might even know, be able to see a little bit. He was kind of blowing some of that undercoat out and so that can get kind of itchy. So that tactile can help kind of loosen that second layer of fur. Yeah, definitely. He's got these little tufts of fur <laughs> that are coming off of him. So during the summer months, it looks like a, a, a whole other fox kind of exploded in his house. And we have to go and clean up enough fur to make a new fox, pretty much. Yeah, like a little fox <laughs> pillow. Yeah. Uh, does he have an exhibit in the zoo and where is it located? He does not have an exhibit that's viewable by the He's part of our education department. So Lando is off exhibit in the education department near our amphitheater. So he lives back there. And generally, you would see him in shows. Um, we're not running shows right now, so he is out for training sessions that people can kind of come across during the day. Um, and then obviously live shots like this. And then moving forward, we're actually gonna be doing some virtual programming and we'll have some educational things available online uh, where you can see animals like the fox and other education animals virtually from home. And you said how he loves walnuts. Walnuts are one of his favorite foods. So Chris is offering him a wide variety of things, but whenever we get a new animal, we try out a lot of you know approved treat options to see what they love, and walnuts have become one of his absolute favorites, which is, we were kind of surprised by that. But like we said, foxes eat a wide variety of different foods, and he loves walnuts. He also really loves craisins. That's one of the, those are one of his favorites. And the mice. That's kind of like the, the mm -hmm. really high, high ticket item right there that are his mouse bits. All the summertime, kind of watermelon when it's mm -hmm. in season, that's yep. good too. And that also we can kind of even freeze them or get them really cold so that way he can have a cool snack for when it's really, really hot out. So I'm gonna show you guys something else that we have down here. So I'm gonna come to the stage 
Chris brought out some things that we were hoping the fox would interact with, but they're these little towels and we actually just put some scent on them. So this one has A and D ointment, which just has a really unique smell that he seems to be really into. And then the one behind me has root beer on it. So we have a wide variety of different scents and we use those as enrichment for the animals that are really scent oriented, have a great sense of smell. And it's just an extra thing for them. It kind of brings a new scent into their environment. They oftentimes will rub on it and then they'll or kind of move it around and they have to remark their territory. Um, so we were hoping that he would interact with them. He but might on the wall. He's too distracted, at least in the front there. Mm -hmm. The scent marking <laughs> is really important for foxes. He is, uh, he interacts with his enrichment a lot more in his house. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about, foxes by nature are really nervous animals because they have potentially a lot of predators out in the wild. So he is a little bit more nervous when he's out here on stage and he tends to not interact with things as much when we're out here. <laughs> There's a lot of noises, a lot of different smells, people walking by. So he gets very distracted. Uh, what is that long tail helpful for? His tail provides him balance. So he has that nice, long, fluffy tail, and it mostly serves for balance. So he's doing a lot of jumping, a lot of climbing, and so it balances out his body and kind of acts as a little bit like a rudder, so he can kind of balance himself when he's jumping from branch to branch when he's up in the tree. But if you'll notice, it's really big and puffy also. So that is a great way to make his body look a lot bigger than it is. So you'll see a lot of animals that grow their fur really long or really big. A great example is a male lion's mane or like a male orangutan's long dreadlock hair. It's a really easy, fairly inexpensive energy-wise way to make your body to make your body look a lot bigger than it is. So having that really puffy tail really kind of doubles his body size and it he makes it makes him look a little bit more imposing to potential predators. All right, you guys, we are winding down our segment now. Are there any last questions about Lando before we sign off? I don't see anything yet. Okay, well, if you guys have any, if you come up with any other questions about Lando, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we can answer them after the fact. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us today here on Facebook Live. Remember, the zoo is open, so come out and join us. Just make sure to bring your masks so you can stay nice and safe and keep all of your fellow citizens safe with you. And also tune in online for any virtual programming that we'll be offering starting next week. Thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.